So today we're going to talk about you know facts and myths and facts about spinal stenosis, specifically lumbar stenosis. So what does stenosis mean? Okay, we use that term a lot. They'll say I have stenosis, but there's different types of stenosis, like anything. Okay, and stenosis just means a narrowing. Okay, so it means a narrowing around a certain area. It could mean a narrowing in vessels in your heart. It could mean narrowing in portions of your spine. Um, let's say where nerves exit. Um, there's different areas where you can have stenosis and narrowing. And I'll say a lot of people will come, this is a classic scenario, someone will come into the clinic and said, say, listen, I have um, lumbar spinal stenosis. This is my prescription from my doctor. And I'll say, that's great. Um, you know, would love to have more information. What did he say? He said, well, you know, he said, come to therapy. He looked at my MRI or my x-rays and said, you have stenosis, and that's a diagnosis. The problem is, is that stenosis sometimes is the pain generator, and sometimes it isn't, meaning some things that you would think would be not tolerated with someone that has spinal stenosis are actually tolerated. So you're like, it, it, the, the, the MRI, and we've talked about this before, the MRI doesn't always match um, or x-ray doesn't match the patient's description of what they're having trouble with or even their movements, okay? So um, don't, uh, partly I don't want you to be scared that spinal stenosis, because it's very structural, meaning it's a narrowing. It's not gonna change based upon anything we do for the most part. But uh, through therapy, we can get things moving a little bit better, loosen things up, but essentially that narrowing of that space is something that's gonna cause problems for certain things, okay? So let's talk about that in the lumbar spine, okay? In the lumbar spine here, we're just, we'll go over a quick anatomy type thing. We have a triangular bone in the bottom called the sacrum. And then we have different segments. Um, this one oftentimes, if you're reading an MRI, they'll refer to this as the S1 segment. That's the top of the sacrum. And it just means the top level of the sacrum, okay? Then the other one is like L5, L4, L3. And you kind of go all the way up and the name them. There's five lumbar vertebrae, okay? Um, the ones that you commonly hear the most problems with, um, we're gonna turn the spine around here, are the lower vertebrae seg vertebral segments. Those are the ones that we th are generally the ones that people uh, have the most problems and breakdown. And one of the thoughts behind is it, those two se these segments right here contribute to most of our forward bend and our reaching back, our leaning back. So they take a lot of wear and tear. So most of our problems are occurring at this level. There's all this debate about sacral movement, you know, meaning is there any kind of sacral movement um, in these two sacral iliac joints? This is the ilium here and they have two joints. So there's really no movement, it's like a big foundation. So all the motion has to occur from these, these two segments here. So this is our L4 vertebral segment, our L5 vertebral segment. This is our, and then how do we name the disc? The disc is our L4, L5 segment or L5, S1 segment, that's our disc. This is a normal, very good looking disc, okay? There's nothing abnormal about it. As it lose water content, a lot of times when we age, you'll see this disc becomes a little blackened and sometimes it'll look like it has decreased height compared to a spine of, let's say, a 20-year-old. So then we take ourselves and we wander around the side here. It's hard to see from a side view, so I'm gonna show you a little higher in the lumbar spine, but it's the same as in the lower lumbar spine, what the, what, how we create that stenosis. So, so let's take a look at this little spot right here. This is our little nerve that's exiting. The hole is made up of the lower segment and the upper segment, so the two vertebral bodies this, that hole is made up of those two segments joining each other. The lumbar nerve, the nerve root, that'll go down your leg, okay, and provide muscle, sensation, you know, all those things, goes out, exits the spine, and goes down to the muscle groups and, and different areas around your, that's why you'll get numbness, tingling, and all that if that nerve root's affected. So what can contribute to the stenosis? So something in this hole with stenosis actually is getting in the way of the nerve. It's actually irritating the nerve. So what is causing it. So it's like, what is causing the stenosis? Sometimes um, you have bony fragments in here that'll or spurs that'll cause what they think, a pinch of that nerve, okay? Other times, the disc material right here actually in herniation comes in and narrows and pinches and makes this hole smaller, okay? So let's talk about a little bit of the movement. So as we stand up and we arch backwards, this little hole gets smaller. As we flex forward, the hole gets bigger. Okay, so let's go back, let's go to the blackboard here now. 
So positions that you talk about, someone that truly has stenosis, okay, that hole is larger. Very simple. When the hole is larger, the nerve going through it um, has more room to operate, okay? So um, someone that has stenosis um, like that, um, they'll love to sit. There are the people that have back problems or sciatica that say, I love sitting. Sitting is the best thing for me. If I'm having trouble, I sit down and sometimes very quickly I feel better. And the idea is that there's actually increased room around the nerve root or those structures. Okay? So that's a classic thing. You'll see the folks with stenosis, they'll, they'll, they'll have a hard time standing up. But the idea is when they stand up, the hole gets smaller. So you have two segments. My mom's the artist, I'm not the artist. They have the nerve root right here. Comes out and goes down down to your leg or wherever it is. Or, you know, it doesn't, depending on the nerve root, it may go lower or higher in your leg or into your buttock area, or whatever. So that nerve root has to exit. So as we uh, as we sit, this hole gets larger. It actually increases in size. When we stand upright and we lean backwards, this hole gets smaller, okay, and compresses that nerve root. The theory is it compresses that nerve root. So the people that have stenosis, they hate walking. They said at a certain point, can't walk anymore. They love the stationary bike. They'll say, hey, the stationary bike feels really good. Like, I don't have any pain when I do that. Um, they're the folks when they try and do any kind of overhead work. When you do overhead, let's say lifting, they tend to arch and it narrows that hole. So they actually can't fit. They say, oh, it's, oh, my back pain comes on when I lean backwards. So those are the cases where stenosis is truly stenosis. They call it classic stenosis. But a lot of people are given this description, like they have this narrow area around the nerve root, but they like to sit. It actually, it doesn't fit the picture. So when you have a diagnosis of stenosis based upon an x-ray to MRI, you really want a doctor to kind of ask you a few more things about, or a therapist, um, when does it bother you? Um, does it bother you when you're sitting, when you're standing? Is there a position that your body prefers? If your body typically prefers a more upright position, this type of stenosis is not um, typically, like if you like standing, uh, standing up, um, walking, this type of stenosis, classic stenosis where you have a narrowing of that hole, they don't like it. When they stand up, hole gets smaller, okay? They sit down, hole gets bigger. Very, very simple, okay? So what we decide in therapy oftentimes is whatever, depending on the MRI, obviously there's some things we consider, but we don't weigh that as much as you think. We actually weigh a lot of what um, you tell us based on what you tell us and what, how your movements are. If we're in the clinic here and we're bending forward repeatedly, and they go, wow, my, my back's feeling great. The, the feeling is maybe we're loosening up something, we're making that hole a little bit larger. And I'll make making this kind of simple, but this is very important conceptually because um, a lot of people get this diagnosis and get fearful that, wow, you know, I, this, there's no change. I'm never going to get rid of this and all that. And it, it doesn't really fit how they do. Same person or a different person in the clinic gets stenosis. They walk in, I've got my prescription, and they're arching. They lean back and they feel better. And that's a case sometimes that you may have a different type of problem. The stenosis, there might be some narrowing in the area, but that's not the pain generator. That's not the thing that's causing problems for their back or causing their sciatic symptoms and things like that. Um, classic to st stenosis, that's really, truly stenosis that matches the patient's movement, meaning like the x-ray seems to match what the patient's complaining about. Um, those type of things um, are typically more of an older population, you know, mid to, mid to upper 60s, 70s, 80s. They're the stenosis people. They're the people that physically, even when you tell them to stand up, even if it doesn't hurt, they just physically can't stand up. They kind of do this. They're kind of the people that you see in the shopping carts in the food store, and they're kind of leaning on the shopping cart because it opens up that space and that hole, and they actually feel better. Now there's other types of stenosis um, that are a little bit different, okay? And the stenosis we're talking about is where the spinal column, let's see if I can draw this good. Oh, I think I did, okay. I'm not gonna be exact on this, but 
this is our spinal cord. So this is if I want, this is like, if I cut my body straight across, okay, this is the vertebral body, which is what we were talking about here. And this is all bone right here. This is actually our spinal cord. Off the spinal cord, you have nerve roots that basically exit off the spinal cord and go down the leg. Obviously, they're, or they're going that way, let's say. Um, with this, some people have what they call congenital um, or um, um, spinal cord stenosis, where they actually have a, the, uh, the spinal canal, where the spinal cord is, actually is narrowed. Um, it's more narrowed in the thoracic. It's the smallest in the thoracic, less so in the lumbar and the, uh, and the cervical spine. Um, but that's another type of stenosis. This is more intervertebral foramen. This foramen is just whole, and it's made up from these two um, vertebral segments. Okay. So I just wanted to clarify some of the things that you'll notice when you get a diagnosis of stenosis, that might be the correct diagnosis. We're not saying that there isn't something that's not like it was when we were 20, but that is not actually the source of your pain, okay? Now, there are exceptions. Um, if you have an incredibly large herniation, so I'm gonna show the disc real quick here in a different color. So we have a disc material right here, okay? We have an inner nucleus pulposus, and we have this outer angle. So this is the, it's like a little shock absorber. It's like cartilage in between here, and it acts like a shock absorber, but also provides stability. Occasionally, when pe someone can have an incredibly large herniation, okay? In fact, let's go over and talk about herniation before we go. Let's go back to track. I'm gonna just show you um, uh, a disc. So this is, it's gonna make it a little larger here. I'm depicting this disc just a little larger. So they have their inner nucleus, and when they get a bulge or herniation, what occurs is all this material pushes out and can make this very large herniation. So large, it actually encroaches on the nerve root. And what happens is, instead of having these, these, these two bony segments close to each other, what we have is an actually incredibly large herniation. And that actually makes it, in theory, there's no room for that nerve to exit. Okay, so that actually, that's some of the exceptions to the rule is that they'll find that these people, um, even though they've got herniations, it's not classic stenosis. The stenosis, the narrowing, is not because of bony spurs or this disc being smaller. What's happening is that this large herniation is going forward and it's blocking the ability, like they literally can't stand up because they're getting their, these two segments right here when we lean backwards are hitting that herniation and they can't arch backwards. So all right, we got a little, little interruption there, technical difficulties. So let's go back to this. If you have a very large herniation, occasionally they, they do benefit from um, doing some exercise, but sometimes that material will recenter itself and they actually feel better over time, meaning this, this herniation starts getting smaller over time and it doesn't rest on that red nerve root that we're depicting that goes down. So there's a few different issues. Spinal stenosis, um, a lot of people have spinal stenosis. I think the figure is 80 or 90% by age 80, people have some form of spinal stenosis. And I gotta tell you, not everyone, even though you think as you get into that age group, you might just have pain. Not everyone has pain in their back or their legs. Um, they can, but realize there's a lot of people that have that diagnosis that have no symptoms. So when they get, and they've known, and we talked about this on previous ones, that they, they've looked at um, x-rays and MRIs over a course of I think a 25 year period and looked at all these studies and they found, and they did, they did studies on people that didn't have any pain or symptoms. And what they found is um, some of these people had significant herniations, disc bulges, tremendous number of them had stenosis, but didn't have pain. So that's why I'm talking about stenosis and saying it's a finding, it's part of a, I would say an overall clinical picture and something that we should consider. Um, if I take someone through an examination that has a diagnosis of stenosis and they, they seem to have more symptoms when we take them into a backward position or sin, tends to like, tend to want to sit, sometimes the diagnosis is right and sometimes it's wrong. You just, you just don't know until you start moving the patient and talking to the patient and understanding the things they're having trouble with. I always tell people in the clinic here, I'll say, you know your back, you know your body better than me. You know it more than, I can't even ask enough questions. You know exactly how it acts, when you have trouble, what things it doesn't like, what things it likes. 
you know, it likes when I bowl, it doesn't like when I do overhead spackling or painting, um, you know, so that's why that's so important. So whoever you see, I don't care who you see, make sure you're very clear on tr things that you're having trouble with and your goals. Some people that have stenosis, they just avoid activities that bother them. Other people, they like to do activities that make stenosis worse, like they actually, or makes their back worse. And it all depends on what your goals are. And that allows us to determine if we can really help you you know, what the chances of success of therapy or, or any intervention. So in some cases, listen, um, this stenosis is so severe, it, it's, it's, it's a problem that they actually have to, um, oh, let me explain in a second here. I don't know if I can draw this as good as I did before. Uh-oh, losing ink here, okay. Sometimes you've got this disc segment in here. You've got such narrowing that there's certain surgical procedures where they'll actually try and rotor rooter, I think was a term. I, I, I tell you, if a doctor said rotor rooter, I would get really nervous in the knees there. But that's kind of what they're doing. They're opening up this area and they're making a bigger hole. Okay? It's, um, you know, it's still a very significant surgery. It's still very technical. You know, to get to that spot in the back, they got to take a lot of the musculature and pull it back as they get in there. The incisions have gotten smaller, but they're opening up that hole. Um, let's say if there's spurs or little pieces of bone that are kind of going into that, that, that area. Other surgeries, um, let's see if I can draw it a third time. Okay, other surgeries. Oh my goodness, I'm on a roll. Okay, it's not a great depiction, but other surgeries, um, if it's the disc that's giving them trouble, they'll shave down the herniation and take that portion of the disc and shave it down, similar to like meniscus in the knee when they scope it, uh, a meniscus tear, they're kind of shaving it out of the way. And they'll shave that disc, kind of scar it down, hoping it's not impinging on the nerve roots that are exiting out of this area. So you're just taking pressure, uh, sometimes even called deep compression surgery, you're taking pressure on those nerve roots. Then there's spinal fusions where they actually try and um, recreate the disc, they take the disc material out, they pack it with bone, and they try and have this bone kind of make sure that hole stays nice and wide. And if the disc is giving you trouble, that disc is removed. So there's a couple options. But anyway, that's in more severe cases of stenosis. And, you know, they're, they're not as, um, their response to um, therapy is not, in, is not as good when you're talking about those severe cases. But I have had lots of MRI scans. You look at radiologists. That's the doctor that interprets your MRI. Um, that have indicated you know, moderate to severe um, uh, foraminal stenosis, and they do well. You know, anytime you hear severe, you get nervous. But sometimes, even in the MRIs, you you know, it's it scares you prematurely. It's really not um, not that it's not severe, but the severity of the scan doesn't mean you're gonna you're not gonna feel better. It doesn't mean that the pain will go, go away. So anyway, before we wrap up, one last thing I want to tell you is that um, my, one of the things we talk about here is just because you have severe pain. Doesn't mean, doesn't mean that you need complicated interventions or complicated treatments. Sometimes severe pain can get resolved with very simple interventions that just don't so simple until you do it, you know? So don't give up on it. I just wanna give you guys a few more things, a food for thought so you can make a better decision and hopefully you understand lumbar spinal stenosis a little bit better than you did before this video. Please place your comments in there. If you like it, like our video, share it to a friend that maybe has been given an MRI that says spinal stenosis and maybe they're a little scared. Um, and consider and realize that you're, what you tell the, the doctor, or the therapist, um, your movement exam, your MRI are all pieces of the puzzle to understand how to help you. Okay, and what are the chances of success? So consider that when you're doing that. And uh, subscribe if you like it, if you're not a subscriber. Have a great day.